My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. On day number 81, we began the topic of ratio and proportions. Today we're going to continue with it on day number 89. We're going to do one more day on day tomorrow on day 90. And then later on down the road, we're going to do 10 more in a series, which are going to be a little bit more difficult problems dealing with ratio and proportions. But today we're going to continue with the series of pretty simple, straightforward ratio problems and proportion problems. Here's the first one. We are told that we are told that x is half of y, and we are told and, and y we are told is a third of z. We are told that x is half of y and y is a third of a z. Question simply is, what's the ratio of x to what's the ratio of x to z? The simplest, the quickest, the most efficient method option with uh, way to tackle this kind of problem is to just make up numbers, just make up any old number that works as long as uh, you don't make any careless arithmetic error. x is half of y, what do you want y to be? Let's, let's pretend y is 10. Just plug in any old number that you want. If y is 10, then x would have to be, x is half of y, x would have to be 5. So far so good. Whatever value that you plug in for y here, obviously we have to plug in the same value for y here. So draw a little line there, number there. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time writing it on the side like that. Not only so it takes time to write it on the side, but during the exam, then after after you, uh, when you get to the answer to answer, then your eyes are going all over the place looking for where you wrote down the values of the variables. Don't do that. Just put it right in the problem, uh, uh, or on 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 a, on a scratch paper. If you're taking the computer, if if you're taking the exam on the computer screen. So y is ten. X is x is x is half of y, y we're pretending is 10, so y is 10, and we are told that y is the third of z. If y is the third of z and y is 10, then z would have to be 30. That's the only way it's going to be third of z. That's it, we're done. x is 5, and y is z, so it's 5 to 30, which, which of course you can, we have to reduce it, which is what it boils down to 1 to 6. 1 to 6 is the answer. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Similar one. We are told Pause the video immediately. I forgot to tell you, as soon as I finish writing the problem, pause the video immediately and do it yourself first. Here's, here's the next one. P, we are told, is a third of Q. Then they're going to tell us that Q is a quarter of R. Question is, what is the ratio, what is the ratio of P to Q to R. Well, let's find out, shall we? Again, just, just plug in number, any, any old number that you want. But here, we have to decide where should we start our story. In the earlier case, we started the story uh, from the beginning, from this end, because it was easier. Here, if you plug in P, then a third of P has to be third of, it, it will be much easier if you start from the, uh, from the bottom up. We are told that Q is a quarter of an R. I'm going to pretend R is 100. Why 100? Because it's very easy to take a quarter of it. The Q would have to be 25. Q is a quarter of 100. Q is 25. If Q is 25, we put it in here. Q is 25. And then we find out that P is a third of Q. P is a third of a Q. And at that point, I realize that having put in 25 for Q actually wasn't, wasn't a great idea. It wasn't such a bright idea because we had to take a third of it. You can't really take a third of that. At that point, you have two choices. One choice is to actually sit down there and cry your eyes out. Other one is to immediately change the numbers. Let's change the numbers. Instead of 100, instead of 100, let's pretend it's 120. Q is a third of R. If R is 120, if the new value of R is 120, then a third of that is going to be 30. And Q is now 30, and we are told that P is a third of Q. If Q is 30, P would have to be 10. That's it, we're done. Now we have the nice numbers. We have 10 to Q, which we found out is 30, to R, which is 120. Oh, we don't even have to do anything. They're all zeros, so the the ratio is 1 to 3 to 12. 1 to 3 to 12 is the answer. 1 to 3 to 12. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. The next one is a little bit different. We are told that Mike's Mike's monthly expenditure 
Mike's monthly expenditure for food, rent, and miscellaneous item for food, for food, rent, and miscellaneous items are in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 1. 5 to 3 to 1, apparently he eats a lot of food. We are told that if his total monthly expenditure is $1200, what does he pay for rent? What does he pay for rent? Do it yourself first as I said before. So, food, rent and miscellaneous item are, we are told, are in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 1. 5 to 3 to 1, the total parts, the total parts are going to be 9. 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 9, which means that 9 parts have to equal the total expenditure, which we are told is 1200. Which means one part equals 1200 divided by 9. 1200 divided by 9. Let's do it here. 1200, 1200 divided by 9. Let's see what happens. 1200 divided by 9, not P. 1200 divided by 9. How many 12 does, how many 9, how many 9 does 12 have? 12 has 1 9. 12 has 1 9. The remaining 3 goes and joins a 0, becomes 30. The remaining 3 goes to 0 and becomes a 30, and 30 has 3 nines. 3 nines are 27. The remaining 3 goes and joins a 30. So it's 0 and becomes 30 one more time. And that 30 has 3 nines. And then we have a... So we take a 27 from the 30. We have a remainder of 3. And that 3 has to be divided by 9. So it's 133 and 3 nine, which is same as 133 and 1 third. So that's the value of 1 part. 1 part equals 133 and 1 third. His rent. His rent is what you're looking for. How much does he pay for rent? Rent is three parts. So we have to take three times that amount. We have to take three times that amount. Three times this amount. 133 times three is going to be nine, nine, and three. And three times one third is going to be another one. So it turns out that it is $400 even. It is $400 even. Now at this point, at this point I hope that, I hope that you were able to in fact see you are in fact able to see that I went about this problem in a very roundabout way. We went through, went, uh, went through this problem in a very roundabout way. This problem is actually a very straightforward problem. Here's what's going on. Here's the most straightforward way. Look, we found out that the total parts are 9, aren't they? That there are total parts 9 and his rent is 3 parts, which means his rent, his rent is simply one third of the total expenditure. Because it's nine parts total and the rent is three parts. Three is one third of the total. That's it. Since his total since his total expenditure, since his total expenditure we are told is twelve hundred, therefore his rent must be one third of twelve hundred, which is four hundred, which is exactly what we found here. This would have been a smarter way. Which this would have been a most this would have been a smarter way, more direct way, quicker way, more efficient way to tackle this problem. This was very academic. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.